Hello, and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. Thank you again so much for tuning in this week. I'm Stacey Musial. And I am Brenda Carey. We are your co hosts and souls on the journey. We invite you to be a part of our Be The Love tribe in support of your spiritual growth and transformation to come home to your divine self. Let's raise our vibration to love. Hmm. And before we begin, I'd like to invite us to just get settled in and just do a little meditation and connection to our bodies. And just taking a breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, letting go of anything that's keeping you from being present in this moment. And just bringing your attention to your heart space, the heart that beats for you each and every day in each and every moment and keeping you here and moving on this planet and bring your attention to the cells in your heart. Mm, Each cell mm, just vibrating your being alive and just bring gratitude for each cell as it makes up the whole being that is you. And within that, mm, going deeper and deeper into the mitochondria and the nucleus and just allowing just your awareness to move into that space and thanking, thanking the cells of your entire being, all of which make you, you, and the wholeness that you are. And just allowing yourself to just feel, feel into that wholeness. Feel into the energy. Energy of yourself. For you, you don't have to think about being and the heart beating. And it's just, it's there. And so when we put our attention on it, We allow it to be seen and heard and understood. It can open up to more and more connection to your whole being as a whole. And just taking another breath in through your nose, breathing into that heart space, breathing into all of your cells, your systems and your organs, and then breathing out letting it go, knowing that you can always, always, always connect, connect to each part of you and sending it love and light in each and every moment and any time throughout the day. Thank you, Stacey. What a beautiful way to open our conversation on the topic of cleansing. And as the as of this recording, we are coming into the spring equinox, and there is a lot of information around the spring cleanse. I know in the tradition that I study of Ayurveda, there's a big emphasis on spring cleansing. But we wanted to bring some clarity around the different levels of cleansing. It's not just for the body, but I feel like our culture really emphasizes that there's a lot of myths around what body cleansing is, but there's also mental and emotional cleansing as well as spiritual cleansing that happens because we are not, you know, compartmentalized beings. We are beings with, you know, as yoga states, body, mind, and spirit. So the first thing that I wanted to address is oftentimes uh, clients come to me with just very wide, nervous eyes and they're like cleansing. They're like, oh, no. And they automatically think it's going to be a time of deprivation. They think they're going to starve. They think they're the only thing they're going to eat is like 
watermelons and green stuff. I mean, there's a lot of just interesting ideas that people have around cleansing. And so hopefully throughout this conversation, we're going to clear some of that up and also give you opportunities to really think introspectively, like where in your whole body being might be a good idea to be able to release and let go of toxins, all kinds of toxins. Yes, the physical toxins we think of like the pesticides, herbicides, things like that from our food and drink, but also the mental toxins and the emotional toxins. Those are just as alive within us um, as the physical ones are. And they do play off of of each other. So that's what we're going to be talking about and also bringing in the component of electromagnetics, how we are exposed to so much more Wi-Fi than we ever have. And I and I don't think that's going to decrease as time goes on. In fact, I think it's probably going to increase. So throughout this process for this episode, just kind of nothing, nothing needs to be received as guilt or, oh, I should be doing a cleanse. Absolutely not. Take in what you want, discard what you don't, but just keep in mind that oftentimes we can feel stuck or stagnant in life. And sometimes a cleanse can be a perfect way to start to flow again, just like in the springtime, the water, the snow melts, and then the water begins to flow. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. And, you know, I'm currently on a cleanse. <laughs> um, <Woo-hoo>. Yes. <laughs> and I personally love cleansing um, as it gives my body just a beautiful reset. Um, you know, I, I, I did a liver cleanse last week and I'm on a, on a kidney cleanse this week. And and to me, it's it's a beautiful gift that I get get to give my body, and I'm because I'm creating space. There's a spaciousness when you start to cleanse because, like, I'm doing you know a physical cleanse where there's some juicing involved and some herbs and and a lot of teas and, and broths and and raw food, raw um, vegetables, um, and those are basically on the the tail end. And then there's just three days of a lot of just mostly liquids. But but what I find is that when I cleanse physically, it makes so much room in that spaciousness for the emotional body to be released because the physical, the physical body holds on to cellular memories and those cellular memories start to make space for those to come up and they bubble up and you might like, I've been having like memories that I had things I had never, um, I hadn't thought about in a long time and I'm like, Oh, where'd that come from? Right. And so, and then this, you know, maybe sometimes there's been an emotion that I get to just tune into that has showed up and, you know, I get to ride that wave and feel I'm like, Oh, I haven't felt that um, mm-hmm. in a long time or that hasn't, you know, what, where is that coming from? But it's, it's just energy. It's moving up through the body. And so it's really an invitation for me to get quiet and, and introspective and allow myself to, to move through that energy rather than holding on to it because that's what the cleanse is for. So, cause when we feed ourselves constantly and we we're not giving ourselves a break, um, then we are, essentially stuffing our emotions down yeah, absolutely it, and and yeah and stuffing you know those um those emotions and then we don't have room to really feel what is there and we're not really paying attention you know because the mind is also you know going into creating stories and you know and so there's this whole process so when we really take time for ourselves and allow that cleanse to happen, we can really allow what needs to come up, what's ready to be cleansed, to be, to be released. Mm, Absolutely. I, I love that insight. And honestly, I wish I could say I love cleansing, 
but I'm going to be honest, I don't. <laughs> I, I've i learned to appreciate it. I would say I've, I've learned to appreciate it, especially in the spring and the fall season is typically when I cleanse, not always. For me, there's a mental preparation that goes even before if I if I choose to do a physical body cleanse, even though I know one greatly affects the other. But it's interesting when I've started, you know, a, an Ayurvedic cleanse for the body with herbs and traditionally we use like kitchari, which is a very easily digestible meal of um, white rice and split mung beans. If I am not mentally and emotionally prepared, if it doesn't come from a deeper place other than I just want my body to feel better, I usually end up giving up by around day three, um, which generally isn't enough time. And as a highly sensitive person who have, I've got a history of digestive issues, some of the herbs and supplements, like I've noticed what's become increasingly popular, especially at the local natural food stores are like these kits of like three different bottles of like a cleanse for someone to do for a seven day or 14 day period. And I think, yes, sometimes those can be helpful. It gives someone a direction to go. And I also think for the highly sensitive individual, sometimes those herbs can be too much. Uh, sometimes they can just really overpower and create symptoms that are just too intense for a typical highly sensitive digestive system. So that's kind of was always kind of like a, a thought in the back of my mind of like, mm, I like doing cleanses, just not really deep dive ones unless... I feel mentally and emotionally prepared. So for me, my cleansing actually starts in the mental emotional department. And that is I start being very aware of what information am I consuming, whether that's via a screen, whether that's even information overload with books and courses. I love being a forever student, but sometimes I think I can clog and stuff my mind with too many thoughts from outside sources. Although well-meaning sources, I do need a period for that to cleanse and rest. And so oftentimes I will create space in my day if I'm not reading a book or watching a series, then I choose to either meditate or listen to music or do some type of physical body practice if I've created that space. But that's actually, I think, a crucial part of cleansing that often gets overlooked because I think most people see, you know, they go to the natural food store and they're like, oh, it's a cleanse. It comes in a box with three different supplements. I'll do that for a week and all will be well. Well, you know, then they then they realize that, oh, there's so much more because you're right, Stacey. I think when we do start to cleanse the body, then the mental, emotional things can come up. For me, I do it in a little bit different reverse. So I start with the mental, emotional clearing, like that mental space clearing. And from that, I decide, you know what? I do think I need to, whether it's lighten up my diet, you know, maybe go vegan for a week or do you know, some herbal supplements, but I don't quite do the deep dive intensity. And I think it just depends on the person and what best suits their constitution. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's really important to to listen to that and where we're at in our journey and where we're at. And, you know, even, you know, coming into place like, say, after the holidays, right, it might, you know, not be quite the right time. We want to do that cleanse, but maybe you know, you've been eating junk food or holiday snacks or whatever, right? And so going into a a deep dive cleanse right after the holidays might not also be a great, you know, a good idea because it's a it could be a shock to your system. So it's absolutely this gradual, you know, uh, this very forgiving place that you know is gentle and you know you can begin to let go of things um you know and maybe let go of junk food or sugar right and then maybe it's um yeah the social media the or the the news the tv violent yeah. movies you know all of those like i can't watch i haven't watched the you know violent or the news in like probably 20 years um, because I, I realized how much it was 
affecting my energy body. And, you know, as we are bombarded with these messages, I think, you know, it's really important, you know, to recognize how they really impact us because we are, we are energy beings. And when we are watching things like that or connecting to social media and seeing these, you know, images and the other people's energies that actually attaches to our energy field. And so, so when we start to cleanse that, then we can start to really look at and decipher what's, what's mine and what's theirs. And, and it comes from a clearer place. And so that can also, yeah, help with the cleansing process as well. And, you know, so I think it is important to start where we're at and listening to our bodies just because we hear about a cleanse, like, you know, the, every, you know, so many people are talking about cleanses or juice fast or whatever. Right. And, you know, we, we think, oh, well, I should do that. Or this is, you know, what I, I need to do. But, but it's really about listening to your body and, and maybe, yeah, maybe it might not be the right path, right? Maybe it's um, another, like a food-based cleanse, you know, or, you know, maybe it's, um, yeah, letting go of, you know, a certain food, maybe it's caffeine, you know, starting where you're at, um, I think is really important. Yeah, absolutely. I think many people kind of go from, you know, never cleansed before and then they'll go right into like a three-day water fast and mm -hmm. although i commend their motivation because i mean three-day water fast although in a spiritual tradition those have been around for i mean centuries you hear I've... a lot of religious traditions that do water fast and i think for certain uh, in in ayurvedic world we call them uh, constitutions people that do have a lot of earthiness and have a little more water in their constitution it can serve them really really well uh, going in with the right intention though i know a lot of people they they want to lose weight and although yes this may be a path to do it maybe not right out at the get go it can it could actually create more strain in the body and in the nervous system than we realize but i think with support like having a community of people because i think as a very consumerist culture, like we we look at food as just something to consume. And unfortunately, in our really busy culture, we want it really fast. You know, we want it something that is super flavorful, which unfortunately, usually in our American culture means like a lot of salt, a lot of sugar. Uh, and, and we forget to really appreciate the food as energy. And I think one of that's one of the things that I really enjoy about doing a, a cleanse for myself is that I start to feel like there's this co-creation between myself and the food that I'm eating. And I take more intentional time to be grateful for what I am ingesting and realizing that what I do choose to ingest, the nutrients that I choose, is a, then a part of my being. And it really shifts that consumeristic mentality of like, oh, food is just calories in, calories out. I actually think it can have a lot deeper spiritual meaning when we shift that story. Absolutely. And it, it is the the meaning in, in your relationship with food changes, mm -hmm. you know, because we go into this, you know, our culture is is such a consumerism, consumeristic you know, energy. And so we're, we think we need more and, you know, we need this, um, going to the grocery store and, you know, we're buying whatever, you know, is there and, and it's not always for nourishment. It's for, you know, what is this, is it going to suit a craving? And so when we start to really, you know, look at that and, you know, how much food do we really need? And, you know, the, the food pyramid, I mean, the, that's a whole other thing, but you know, it's based <laughs> That's a on a whole like, other episode. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's a false, you know, paradigm of what we need to be eating. It's, you know, and so it, it's given that people like a false way of looking at food, like, oh, we need to start at the bottom, you know, and, and have these, um, this is what we need to be eating, but it's really, it's creating people to be sick um, and unhealthy in our culture. And, and so when we, you know, 
go toward, you know, to food for emotions, because we, you know, we're taught about emotional, um, you know, comfort foods and, you know, and, and so the cleansing, allowing that process to happen and allowing just to be in that space with, you know, what does my body really need? That intuitiveness, that intuitive eating, that intuitive um, connection we have with ourselves because our bodies are going to speak to us in beautiful ways. It's going to say, yes, this feels beautiful or no, this doesn't feel like what I need right now. And when you honor that, it'll, it'll, show up for you in more beautiful ways. Absolutely. And I think it's really important that we get to really build that relationship with ourselves, but then what we really put into our bodies and our minds. Yeah. And essentially it raises our va vibration mm -hmm. and then that creates that strong spiritual connection with us and source or the divine. And uh, there's one thing that when we talk about source and divine in last week's episode, which listeners, if you haven't checked that out, we talked about ascension symptoms. And this kind of correlates with this. After we uh, hit stop on that one, I had thought immediately thought of other types of symptoms that are similar to ascension symptoms, but that can often come up as, as we're going through a cleansing period that I think definitely relates. And that is how much electromagnetic exposure that we are getting. So EMFs is a big topic uh, as, of, as of late. And I have definitely noticed I moved from, well, a very condensed suburban area to a rural area where you know, we don't have, I found out we don't have any towers within a three mile radius and uh, very little antennas. And I think I definitely have noticed the effects of reducing all the Wi-Fi signals that were around. We are now bombarded with electromagnetic frequencies. And I'm going to be really curious to see in the future how that is going to affect our brain health because we are electrical beings, like our neurons fire. And so I think that can also be a part of our cleansing process, turning off the phone as best as you can get away from the Wi-Fi signals, hopefully out in nature somewhere where maybe they don't have any, but I've even noticed like in national parks, I now get really great Wi-Fi reception. <laughs> so even those places aren't quite as free of EMFs as they used to. So I do think that this can also be a cleansing effect, I think especially for our minds and our mental capacity. So if you didn't check out last week's episode on ascension symptoms, I think this definitely correlates to cleansing. And get curious, like, how often are you exposed to EMFs? And is it continually throughout the day? And do, you, do your does your body notice those effects when you're in it? And when you're not? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, EMFs are, are huge. Um, if you want to find out more information about how many antennas are in your area, you can go to antennasearch.com because I was really su not, not super surprised, <laughs> I will say, um, but within a three mile radius of my home and, and I live in, you know, a town or city of, um, I think there's like, I don't know, 200,000 people now um, or something like that, but there's 93 towers and 446 antennas within a three mile radius. So that's pretty, um, pretty that's intense, intense, you yeah. know, and I, I think about it when I, you know, go into the jungle or like in a very, um, you know, with an area that is very rural or, you know, in nature, um, it, it usually does take me about three days to get get completely settled into my energy system. And when I come back, I can really feel it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think it's, it's important, you know, so there are, there are things you can do, you know, to protect yourself. There's EMF protectors that you can, you can buy and um, you can have, put them on your cell phone. Um, the other thing that, um, you know, I do 
is um, sometimes I haven't <laughs> been as consistent as I, I probably want to be at this point, but I, um, but shutting off the Wi-Fi at night, um, you yeah. know, when you're not using it. Um, and so I think, you know, just doing things like that, but, you know, as, um, so as you're starting to cleanse and letting go, you know, the, the invitation is to really get connected to yourself and helping to, um, you know, going through some, some meditation processes, you know, allowing yourself to go really deep and internal and, you know, noticing what's coming up, getting connected with, you know, how are you feeling? What, what are your thoughts focused on? What, where's your energy and allow that to just be, just have some awareness around that, doing some journaling, um, noticing like, even for me, like when I've, you know, as I, I'm cleansing, I notice my, my dreams, um, also get, become a little bit more vivid and especially lately, like there's, it seems like my brain is continuing to work out even past situations, which is really interesting. So it's, this process that's continuing to unfold as I, as I continue to let go, but just some real, some things that, you know, I invite you to, to really sit with, um, while you're, you know, as you're going through, um, whatever cleanse process you feel like, and, you know, as we've said, it can be in many forms, um, based on what feels good for you in this moment. Mm. Yes. So happy cleansing. And I'm curious to our listeners out there, what type of cleansing do you do? Is it a regular process? Is it seasonal? Is it, you know, once a year? Is that every once in a great while? Would love to hear your comments and feedbacks on specific things that you do for your body, your mind, and your soul as well. Uh, feel free, give us an email, be the love 999 at gmail.com and let us know. We love hearing from our listeners. And thank you for listening to Be The Love Podcast. Find a spiritual home with us and let's connect on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. We always appreciate five-star reviews on iTunes or Spotify. And I'm Brenda Carey. And as a holistic healer, I offer coaching and online programs to guide highly sensitive people in their path to vibrant health. My website is sacredpathyogaandreiki.com. And I'm Stacey Musial. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in whole person, deep soul healing. And you can find out more about my work, my book and programs at awakenyourempoweredsoul.com. You can check out our links in the show notes and stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m.